Welcome back to my channel. This week I'm going to be making a ferret hammock. So um, I'll just briefly go over the materials that you'll need to do this and what I use to do this and um, I'll give you, kind of show you some examples and some variations that you can do. Um, it's kind of up to you. So there's a couple ways that you can hang them and there's, you don't have to necessarily hang them. Um, so what you'll need to make a ferret hammock is you will need um, some cotton. So I use 100% cotton. Um, this week we're gonna do Minnie Mouse for my girls, Lucy and Ruby. And you'll also need some fleece or um, some kind of soft material. Most people use fleece for this. Um, most tutorials use fleece for this. Um, I'm gonna try something new this week <laughs> or today for the first time. And I'm gonna use what's called a minky fabric. Um, it's super, super soft. Baby blankets are made with this a lot of times. Um, and I have made blankets for my nieces and nephews with this. And that project also would use cotton. So it works successfully there. So I think it will be fine to do for a ferret hammock, but we're gonna find out, um, stay tuned. In addition, you will need some kind of way to cut your fabric. So a rotary cutter or a pair of scissors or maybe both. Um, and then you will wanna get some thread um, I'm going to use some black thread because it matches little Minnie Mouse over there and um, a ruler, some way to measure your fabric. Um, and then you're also going to want a way to hang your hammock up. You would want to use either grommets or you would want to use um, some kind of poly strapping or just some kind of strapping that you sew into the blankets or to the hammock, I'm sorry, so that it just um, hangs and it's just in there permanently. Now my preference is to use um, some sort of strapping or elastic. So that's what I'm going to use today. And um, this I just find easier because I can kind of make it the length that I want it to hang from the cage and all I have to do is put a clip on it and hang it in the cage. With the grommets, um, for example, this is one that I made using grommets. And, I, and it's great. It's a great hammock. My ferrets love it. The thing is though is that, you know, if you put a hook and the hook's only an inch, um, it's really close up to the top of the cage. So I kind of, you know, it's a hammock. I kind of want it to be down a little bit, a couple inches from the bars at the top or wherever it's hanging from. Um, if you use grommets, that's fine, but you would just need a hook that's long enough or big enough for your animal or your comfortability to let it hang a little bit. Um, if I put a regular hook on this, it leaves about this much space between the hammock and the roof of the cage, wherever I'm hanging this. I just don't like that. So with this, I have a little bit more leeway and discretion over how far down I want the hammock to hang from the top of the cage. You know, that's, so that's why I, I really prefer to use this over grommets. I have also decided that I wanted to make like a big giant pillowcase one of these. So this, I did this one time. Um, I had extra fabric. I was kind of bored and I was like, I'm going to make a big pillowcase fabric thingy hammock and not hang it. So I did this. Um, so they love this. They absolutely love this thing. All four of them get in here. They wrestle, they play. We have taken this to ferret play date. So if you don't want to do a hammock and you would prefer to do one of these, it's the same general concept that I'm going to show you today. With the hammock, you just have to adjust the size accordingly. Um, I'm not even really sure what the size of this is. Um, so just an idea if you want one for that. So what I will say is that um, with the hammocks, it's not a one size fits all kind of kind of deal. It's kind of whatever size you feel like you'll need for your animal. If you have ferrets, I normally do um, 16 by 16 or 18 by 18. I've even done 20 by 20. Uh, it just lets it be bigger and they're a little bit bigger animal than say like a hedgehog or even a rat depending on, I guess, um, the sex of the rat. I'm not real overly familiar with rats, so don't hold me to that, um, rat owners out there. Um, but I know for ferrets, 16 by 16 is good, especially if you're gonna have more than one lay in this. Um, if if four, all four of my ferrets laid in this, I would probably make it bigger, but they don't all four lay together. They normally like double up. Um, that's just how I find them most of the time. So I have found that 16 by 16 works really good. Actually, I'll probably do 17 by 17 because for those of you who sew or um, you know that you, I do a half inch seam allowance, so you're gonna lose a little bit anyway. Without further ado, I'm gonna be cutting my fabric.
Okay, so now you're gonna to wanna to separate the pieces. You're gonna take a cotton piece and a fleece piece and put them together. They're gonna to be right sides facing each other. So bad, so the not good sides out. Um, and with this particular fabric, you're definitely gonna to wanna to pin it. Um, it will slide. So pin all the way around, all four sides. something that's round and big enough that your ferrets or animal can climb in and then pick a spot that you want them to go in at normally like a corner um, I'm using a pancake maker you pour the batter in and whatever okay so this should be big enough and then you're gonna trace it all the way around I'm using a sewing pencil but you could also use a regular pencil or a pen um, the ink will come out in the wash normally unless it's a permanent marker so I don't recommend using that all right so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew around the circle that we drew or traced onto our fabric Now that you're done sewing your circle, you're gonna to wanna to unpin your fabric. All right, so now that your pins are out and you've sewn your circle, you're gonna to wanna to, um, cut off the excess thread right here. And we're gonna to wanna to cut the whole, cut the fabric out of the center right here. So basically just cut that right like this. So you're cutting in this hole and we're gonna just cut as closely to this black line as possible without cutting the black line. All right, so now that we've done that, we're going to take our fleece and we're gonna pull it through the hole or I guess it's not fleece actually, it's the minky. But if you used fleece, um, you would pull the fleece through the hole. We're gonna cut these little strings, we don't want those. Okay. So, I'm gonna pull that through like this. And now, we've got this loveliness right here. So we're gonna move back over to the floor. So I'm gonna lay this out like this. Straighten this up a little bit. Okay. And we're gonna get our other pieces. And you're gonna take, you're gonna to wanna to make sure if you have a pattern that you're matching up a little bit. Um, so we're gonna take right sides and right sides. So I'm gonna take right side and right side, match it like this. So let's do this. And Minky does this little bunch thing that it does. So I'm gonna wanna pull that a little bit. It's a little tight. Fleece doesn't typically bunch like that. All right. And this will all square up in the end, so don't worry, it looks a little off, but it actually turns out nice. Now, here's where we're gonna get a little tricky. And you're gonna take this, and you're gonna put your right side out. So just, this is kinda hard to tell, um, but this is actually the wrong side, so we'll do right side. You're now gonna wanna cut your stripping. I cut four strips 13 inches long, accounting for seam allowance. Once these are sewn into my hammock, my hammock will hang approximately six inches from the top of my cage. Now that you have your strips ready, set them aside, and you're gonna wanna now pin all four sides of the fabric together. Um, so I pinned mine a little untraditionally. I pinned my pins straight up and down, so I basically made a square around my hammock. I did this so that I could kind of 
put it into a straight line because after sewing the circle, oftentimes it causes it to be a little uneven. So um, I am not a traditional sewer, so I did my pinning this way. And then once I get this all pinned, I will add in the stripping and show you how to sew it and attach it from there. So now I'm going to take my stripping and fold it in half and I'm going to slide it in to the fabric. Um, you want the hoop to be facing in, inside of the fabric. And you're going to want to slide the stripping up to the corner. You want to make sure it doesn't stick outside of the fabric. But you want to leave a little bit of space, um, a little bit of fabric, so you want to cover your stripping all the way. Um, you don't want any hanging out. You want it to be covered by the shortest pieces of fabric. You're going to fold it back over and then you're going to pin it. And you're going to do this for all four corners. So now go ahead and sew all four sides of your hammock. There's no need to leave an opening. You can sew all four sides completely closed. sewn all four sides you're going to want to cut off any excess fabric be careful not to cut your stitch line now that you've cut off the excess fabric check the perimeter of your hammock and make sure that there's no openings or any seams that are not closed next take your hammock and sew each of the four corners put a little x right where the stitching is for your strapping. This is just to reinforce it and make sure that it stays in place and it doesn't fall. Okay, so now we've sewn all four corners. Um, we put little X's in each corner because I, I like this method and I just want these to be strong, so I like to reinforce it a little bit. Um, we've cut off any excess that was there and now is the final moment of truth. <laughs> Um, you're going to want to take your hand and put it inside here and gently pull this inside out. I am really, really excited about this. Okay. And you're going to want to pull on these a little bit. And let's see. Give it a little shake. And that's it. There's your hammock. So, um... And it's nice and soft on the inside. My girls are going to love this. And I'm going to um, get some clips. I will show you what, how I hang it up and what I use for this. These are the clips I use. Um, I got them at like Walmart or Home Depot, even the dollar store. Um, and then you just clip them at the top of your cage. Yeah, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like and subscribe button and share with your friends and leave any questions or comments and if you want to see any other videos or you have any other interest in cage liners or anything like that please please let me know i will be more than happy to show you um i really love doing this it's like a side craft i guess i'm kind of like a nerd or something i don't know but i love my animals and i love to give them things that um that they like and that i like them to have so i hope that you enjoyed this video and um yeah thanks